Okay. After listening to the last recording toward the end, I noticed that the camera microphone is picking up what is happening outside. I just want to give a fair warning that I do live maybe two miles away from Randolph Air Force Base. And so I think right now they're doing some practices or something with the planes. So you hear a lot of planes going by. <laughs> Again, I apologize. Hopefully, as I'm talking, it just sounds like background noise. But when I am silent, you can hear um, those planes going over a little bit louder. So I'm gonna. It shouldn't interrupt or or, or cause too much of a problem. So I am gonna continue recording. Plus, right now is nap time for my son. This is kind of the only time I have during this quarantine time um, to record this video. So. I'm going to get to it. This is uh, module 42, part 2, and we're going to start getting into the word problems of these sections. So now that we know, we have done word problems before, however, most of the word problems that we saw earlier, we were only plugging in values and then just typing it in our calculator and voila, we had the answer. But now that we know how to solve logarithmic and exponential equations, they're not gonna make it so easy for us on how to solve these things, okay? So we're not just gonna be plugging in numbers, excuse me, I have the hiccups, and um, plugging in our calculator. It's gonna be a little bit more intense than that. So this is a compound interest problem. So I do have my compound interest formula up here on the side. And it says, how long will it take for $2,000 investment to grow to 31 or $3,130 at an annual rate of 10.8% compounded monthly. Assume that no withdrawals are made. Round final answer to the nearest hundredth. So remember that A is the amount afterward, and that would be this value here. P is the, um, the initial amount, right? So how much did I put in at the beginning? And that would be the 2,000. R is my rate, and in a decimal, it would be 0 0.108. And then N is going to be um, compounded monthly, means that's going to happen 12 times in one year, okay? The only thing I don't know is time, because that's what it's asking me to find. How long will it take means I need to figure out what time is, okay? But I'm going to plug in everything I do have into that formula. So A will become 3130. P will become 2000. 1 is still the number 1. R is 0 0.108 over N, which is 12, and to the power N, which is 12 times T. Okay? I'm going to stick T in a different color just so it stays out as the variable so we know exactly where the variable is in this problem okay and I'm gonna simplify this right hand side just a little bit you cannot multiply the 2000 in because in the order of operations you are supposed to figure out what's inside the parentheses first so let's go ahead and do that 1 plus fraction 0 0.108 over 12 this is just what's inside the parentheses, and I get 1.009. And if I multiply that together, I get 12t as the exponent, okay? After you multiply what's inside the parentheses, the next thing you're supposed to do is evaluate exponents. However, unfortunately, I cannot type something with a variable in my calculator. Because as soon as I use the letter T, and I could keep pressing this till a T pops up, T has already been reserved as a number in my calculator. It's apparently been reserved as zero. And I can change that value for T, but how do I know what to change it to? That's what I'm trying to figure out, right? We're trying to figure out what number for T will make this side equal that side, okay? So that's the unknown, which means I cannot type it in the calculator, which means I cannot evaluate this expression with the exponent. Therefore, if I can't do the next step in the order of operations, 
which is apply the exponent, then I certainly can't move on in those steps and start multiplying things, okay? And since I can't multiply these together because I'm blocked by the variable, I need to still solve. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of the 2000 by dividing by it. It's merely just a coefficient or a factor to that expression with the exponent. So when I divide by 2000 on that side, I, they just cancel. When I divide by 2000 on this side, I end up with 1.565, which is not a repeating decimal or an ongoing decimal, so I'm not rounding here, okay? Remember we told you not to round until the final answer? This is not a rounded answer. This is an exact decimal. And on the right-hand side, I still have this. And then how do you get the variable out of the exponent, right? These are not the same bases, but we've already discussed that even if they're not, you can still apply the ln on both sides. And because of that, this exponent now comes to the front, making 12t times the ln of 1.009. And you can leave it in parentheses, and you can even put this one in parentheses just because we know they're going to need to be in parentheses in our calculator, right? Now, remember, when you have a, bun a big expression multiplied like that, you do need to multiply those numbers together and write that as your coefficient. So this becomes 12 ln of 1.009, the whole coefficient, times the variable t. And then to solve for t, all I have to do is divide both sides by that coefficient. And so then on this side, 12 ln of 1.009, these will cancel. I'll be left with my variable t all by itself. And here I, um, I do need to type this in the calculator. So fraction first, then ln of 1.56 close my parentheses downstairs 12 ln 1.009 close the parentheses and round it to the nearest hundredth so tenths hundredths that five is going to affect that six so it's going to be approximately 4.17 and that is the value for t so just a tiny bit over four years for a $2,000 investment to grow to 3130 at this rate compounded monthly. Now let's do a different kind of problem. This one is um, a continuous, continuous exponential growth or decay. So we know that for continuous exponential growth or the decay, we have to be using this formula, right? A is still the amount afterward and P is still the initial amount. So here the problem says, suppose 2200 is invested at an interest rate of 1.25% per year, compounded continuously. After how many years will the initial investment be doubled? Hmm. Round your final answer to the nearest hundredth. So we know what the initial amount is, and that's the 2200. What is the amount afterward? It doesn't give me that dollar amount. It just tells me that it's doubled. So what is 2 times 2,200? That is 4,400. So now I know that the amount afterward should be 4,400. What is my rate? My rate is going to be 0 0.0125. And the time, I don't know because that's what I'm trying to figure out, right? After how many years? So T is the unknown again in this problem. So let's plug everybody in. We have 4,400 equal to 2,200 E to the 0 0.0125. And there's my variable T in red, the unknown. So again, you cannot evaluate this exponential in your calculator because there's an unknown variable here. So get rid of the coefficient, 2200 and 2200. This is 2 
and here you just get this exponential expression. Now, you can cancel the E using an LN. So if you apply the LN on the left-hand side, you also have to apply the LN on the right-hand side. And so then the LN and the E will cancel each other out, leaving you with just 0 0.0125 times T. No more exponentials, no more logarithms on this side. And then to solve for T, just divide both sides by that coefficient. So we get the variable T equals this, and it does want me to round to the nearest hundredth. So fraction ln of two, close it over 0 0.0125, and I get 55.45, since this one will affect the five and so that's a pretty long time in order for my investment to double I have to leave it in there for over 55 years almost 55 and a half years that's a pretty long time okay so here it says the mass of a radioactive substance follows a continuous exponential decay model with a decay rate parameter of 4.4% per day. This is important, per day. That means my T is in days. Um, find the half-life of this substance, round the final answer to the nearest hundred. So it says find the half-life. What that means is they want to know how much time does it take for that substance to diminish or decay down to half of its original amount, okay? So I do know that it is a continuous exponential decay, so I am going to keep using this formula. And whether you use the formula with the A, or with the P, I'm sorry, or you use the one that has A0, which means initial amount, um, they're the same thing. Since I use these for the money problems, I usually like to use these for all the problems. I just remember that P is the initial amount. But your book and the computer and Alex likes to use A sub zero, which also means initial amount. It's the same thing, it's just a different letter, okay? So I don't know what I started off with, okay? I don't know at all. I don't know what P is or A of zero, and I'll be consistent with Alex and use A of zero. So I don't know what this is, so I'm gonna leave it as A of zero, okay? E, I do know my rate is going to be 0 0.044, and since it's a decay model, my rate should be negative. It should be going down that percentage per day. And I don't know what the time is, and I don't know what the amount afterward is. I just know one thing about the amount afterward. I know that the amount afterward will be one half of the initial amount, okay? And just like before, you can't type this in your calculator, so get rid of the coefficient. So I'm gonna divide both sides by that initial amount. And then conveniently enough, the initial amount cancels from both sides of the, fun of the equation. So I end up with half, or 0 0.5, equal to e to the negative 0.044t. And then the same thing as before, you can cancel this exponential in an attempt to solve for t. If you apply the ln on both sides, the ln and the e have the same base, so they will cancel each other out, leaving you with just 0.044t on the right. And here, I don't know what ln of 0 0.5 is, but leave it alone, don't type in your calculator too soon. And then divide both sides by the coefficient of t. There goes another plane. And then type this in our calculator. So ln of 0 0.5 over negative 0 0.044. And we get to the nearest hundredth. So tenths, hundredths, the three is not going to affect the five. So 15.75. Now remember, this is in days. Okay, 
So it's going to take approximately 15 and 3 quarters of a day in order for this radioactive substance to decay down to half of what it started with. Okay, We don't know how much it started with and we don't want to either. We just know how long it's going to take according to that rate, how long it will take for it to be half. Okay, And that's called the half-life, right? When you get this time, this is the time that it will take for the initial um, mass to come down to half of its initial mass. That's called the half-life. Uh, because it doesn't matter how much you start off with, whether I start off with 50 grams or milligrams, or I start off with 1,000 grams or milligrams, it doesn't matter. I'm going to end up with half of that after 15.75 days, okay? Now, this example says, suppose that $1,300 is initially invested in an account at a fixed interest rate compounded continuously. So there's that word again, which means I am using this formula again. And it says this is initially invested. So I already know that P is 1300 suppose that after four years so I know that um, T is four the amount of money in the account is 1546 so I know the amount after that four years find the interest rate per year so what I don't know is this interest rate that's the unknown and then round your final answer to the nearest hundredth so first thing I'm gonna do is divide by that coefficient, right? Because our unknown is still up in the exponent. And we should be able to get an exact answer here. If not, leave it as a decimal. I mean, leave it as a fraction. Notice that that did not give me a nice number, so I'm gonna hit fraction. And it simplifies it for me, but unfortunately it doesn't simplify down to a nice decimal, so you have to keep the fraction version. So I'm very glad that this problem was in here because I did tell you never to round until the final answer. And if I type in that decimal in my computer, on my paper, I'm going to have to chop it off at some point, even if I chop it off at one, because the computer itself is rounding to you because it can only fit so many digits on the screen. So it, it's already rounding it. And then if I round it even more on top of that, that's not good. Okay. So don't round it. If you get a weird decimal like this, just put it in its fraction form and use that so that you have the exact value there. Here I have E and I'm gonna multiply those together and get 4R. Now in an attempt to isolate the R, I can get rid of the E by applying the natural log on both sides. And so on this side, unfortunately, it's not going to go away. Um, it's not even going to simplify anything. Over here on this side, the natural log and the E will cancel because they have the same base. And then I can divide both sides by my coefficient. And now R will be all by itself. And so I get the ln of 773 over 650 all over 4. And so then if I want that in a, as a decimal answer, let's see what we get here. So I'm going to rewrite that. I'm just going to put it over here on this side. So rounded, let's see, fraction, ln, and inside the ln is another fraction, 773 over 650, parentheses, and downstairs is just a 4. And if I, I'm just going to write all the decimals here only because you don't want to round this problem too soon. Notice that it says um, round your answer to the nearest hundredth of a percent. This is a pure decimal number. It is not a percentage. So I first have to convert this over to a percentage. Now that it's in a percentage, now I can round it to the nearest hundredth of a percent. So tenths, hundredths, the two is not going to affect that three, which means my final answer is going to be 4.33%. So be careful with this one. 
This is not the final answer because that is a decimal. And the problem says to write your answer as a percent rounded to the nearest hundredth. So just write the whole decimal down at first, convert it to a percentage, and then you can round it. And there goes another airplane. <laughs> so this problem is the last problem in this module, although the next module does have its own word problems as well. It's actually got nothing but word problems in this module. So let's go ahead and keep working. This one says, suppose that the number of bacteria in a common, or no, I'm sorry, in a certain population increases according to a continuous exponential growth model. Um, the sample of 1900 bacteria selected from this population reached the size of 2207 bacteria in four hours. Find the hourly growth rate parameter Find the final, round the final um, answer to the nearest hundredth of a percent. So they do give me the initial amount, which is the 1900 bacteria. They do not give me the rate, that's what they're asking me to find. However, they do tell me that the time is four hours, right? And they do give me the amount after that four hours, which is 2207. So I do still need to divide by this coefficient and let's see if we get an ugly number again or if we're going to have to use the fraction. Yep, we're going to have to use the fraction. So, and this one will not write it as a fraction. So let's see, 221900. And let's just reduce it. It won't, okay? And it won't even give me a reduced form, which means you're going to be stuck writing this entire ugly fraction. And it's okay. We will stick it in the calculator eventually. Here we get four. And then to get rid of the E, we're going to apply the LN on both sides, which means this will cancel out, leaving me just the 4R. And then divide by 4 to solve for R. Um, now I'm going to type that whole thing in the calculator. So fraction, oops, clear. Fraction LN of fraction 2207 over 1900. Close the parentheses and downstairs we put a 4. We get 0 0.0374 I'm not sure if that continues or not, but it doesn't matter. Change it to a percentage. So we get 3.744506. Maybe dot dot dot, maybe not. Nobody cares. Round it to the nearest of a percent. So tenths, hundredths, this four is not going to affect that four. So the answer is 3.74 percent.